Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost and in this tutorial we're going to discover the most efficient method for downloading images into Lightroom and organizing them. For those of you who aren't familiar with Lightroom, let's just talk about the interface for one moment. Up at the top we have our different modules. We're starting in the library module. That's where we're going to import and organize our files. Later, in other tutorials, I'll take you through the develop module and the output modules. But for right now, we'll stay in the library. It's important to know that on the left and right hand side are your panels. That's where we're going to find most of the different options for the modules, as well as down here in our tool area. Down here we have the film strip area. This is how you see the multiple images that you're working with when you move from module to module. You can see that I have a few images already imported into my library, but we're going to go ahead and import some more. I think there's basically two primary ways that you can import your files. Some folks like to import their files directly from their card, and some folks like to import their files after they've already taken the images manually from the card and drag them to the hard drive. So we'll do both, but let's start now with importing from a card. You can see here that it sees my card. We can see all the photos that are on that card. If we wanted to see one of these photos close up, we could double click on it. What that did is it took us from our grid view here to our loop view. We can also click to zoom in. We can use the hand tool to move around. And then clicking again will zoom us out. Tapping the G key or clicking on the grid icon takes us back to this grid view. I want to import all of my files, so I'll just leave them all checked. But if there's something that I don't want to import, I could simply uncheck it. All right, so my images are on this card. I want to copy them to a new location. So let's take a look at all of the options I have over here. For file handling, I want to see my previews quickly, so I'll leave the render preview set to minimal. If I wanted to make a secondary copy, a backup, maybe on another external drive, I could check this on, and then we could choose what folder we're backing up to. For now, I'll turn it off. Under File Renaming, we can either rename our files on import, or we can rename them later. If we want to rename them on import, I can check this on, and then we'll go ahead and select a file renaming template. One of the templates that is new in Lightroom 3 and that I think is going to be very popular is the shoot name with a sequence. You can see that that allows me to type in the name of my shoot or any other information and then it will start renumbering. There are other templates as well. For example, I could use the shoot name plus the original file number so that instead of starting my sequence at zero, Lightroom would actually capture the file number that was originally assigned to the file. So you can see, for example, this one's named underscore mg underscore and in 4765. Lightroom would get rid of the underscore mg underscore and we can see down here in the sample area that it would keep the 47, well, it says 61 because that's the one that's selected, but if I was on 4165, then it would see that as the example. All right, let's go ahead and switch this back to the shoot name and sequence. Of course, I can always go in here and I can edit this and create my own file naming template. That's up to you. All right, so we're going to rename these on import. What do we want to do during import? We can apply any develop settings that we want to, and by clicking on this list, we can see that Lightroom ships with a lot of different presets. So for example, if I knew that I wanted all of my images to appear grayscale, of course, they're not really going to be converted to grayscale. Lightroom is just going to add this set of instructions to make them look grayscale, but I could choose from any of the black and white options right here, or we could scroll down and continue going through the list until we find a setting that we like. But we don't have to do that. Obviously, that's just if you want one consistent look and feel for your images, for all of the images that you're importing. We can always change those later and develop. So let's leave it set to none for now. In the metadata area, you can see that I have a metadata template already created. You definitely want to create this. All you need to do is either select New, or because I already have one, I could say Edit Presets. But let's say New. And then I'm going to kind of cheat here and just pick my other preset so that all this information fills in. So what I'm trying to show you here is you want to come in here and you want to fill in all of your copyright information, all of your contact information, and any other information that you want applied to all of your images on import. Then you would simply name it and save it. 
the nice thing about this template is once you've done this once, you never have to come in here and do it again. And don't worry, if you forget to apply a metadata template on import, we can always do it in the library module. All right, what about some keywords? Well, let's enter in Yellowstone as well as Wyoming. Now you'll notice that I'm not entering in keywords like tree or steam or geyser because not all of the images would need those keywords and anything I put here is going to be applied to all of my images as I bring them in. All right, finally, we need to take a look at the destination. Where are we gonna copy these files to? Well, you can see that on my desktop, I have a folder called Photographs. In there, they're separated by year. So I've got a folder for 2009 and I have a folder here for 2010. What I've done is I've set this up so that I'm going to put all of these images into a subfolder and then we've typed in the word Yellowstone as opposed to the default which is by a different date. This to me just gets a little bit too complex so instead I'm just going to say into one folder. Now if this is the way that you're going to import time and time again what I would recommend is you come right down here and save this as a preset. So when I choose Save as Preset, and then title this and create it, the next time I import, I don't even need to see this full screen. I can check the box in the lower left here and minimize it into Compact View. Then next time I'm importing, look, I can change all of my options, like my shoot name, because I don't know, I might be in Italy, so I would type in Italy, and I would put in the keywords for Italy, and it's really going to take care of all of the rest of it for me. So I love the fact that almost everything you do in Lightroom can be saved as a preset so you don't have to do it over and over again. All right, let's go back to expanded view for one more moment. I just want to show you two things. In the lower left, you can see how many images you're importing as well as how much space they're going to take on disk, and I can even choose to eject my card after import. Fantastic. So I'm going to click import now and Lightroom will go ahead and import those files. You can see a few things happening now. So first we can see this copy and import photos uh, progress bar going. We can also see as the images come in they're listed as part of our current import and we can see that Lightroom has added the folder that we told it to that it is importing the files into. Excellent. Now there's some important information that I need to talk to you about regarding the catalog versus the folders. Now the catalog will show you all of the images that are in your library here. The previous import just shows you what you've previously imported, but if you actually want to start working with the images, I'd go ahead and select them down here in the folder area, in the folder structure. Because down here you can do things like create custom sort orders and things that you can't do with previous import. All right, let's go ahead and drag down. You can see all of the images have been imported. And you know, it looks like I have a bunch of images here that all go together, kind of a part of a time lapse. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create another folder and then select all of these images and put these images in that folder. So with the Yellowstone folder selected, I can click the plus icon to add a subfolder. If I wanted to add this folder somewhere else, like I don't know, maybe I want to move these files to a different drive. I can add a folder anywhere, but for now I'll just click to add a subfolder. We'll call this time lapse. And I'm going to include the selected photos since I went through the process of selecting them. Why not? Hit create. And now we can see that Lightroom has actually created a subfolder and moved those files into it. Now this is very interesting. Let's go ahead and right mouse click and let's view that or show that in Finder or view in Explorer. You can see that when we created that new folder in Lightroom, we actually created that in the operating system. So that tells me that anything that I do in Lightroom in this folder area is going to be mimicked on the hard drive. In fact, you know what, let's go back there for one moment because I also want to show you that my files are right there on my hard drive. Some people think that when you import them into Lightroom, they're magically in Lightroom or in its database. They're not. Your images are wherever you put them when you import them. So in this case, we can see they're on my desktop in that folder called Photographs 2009-2010 in the new Yellowstone folder. And there we've got the other folder that we created through Lightroom. Excellent.
Okay, before we move on, I want to show you one little thing that might be confusing. You can see that I'm in the time-lapse folder, and we can see these photographs. But when I move up to the parent folder, the Yellowstone folder, we can still see the contents of that time-lapse subfolder, which might throw you. So I just want to show you under the library menu, if you turn off the show photos in subfolders, Look at now when I'm in the Yellowstone folder, I can only see the files in the Yellowstone folder. I can't see the time-lapse ones. I would have to go down to the time-lapse in order to see those files. But this might throw you as well because look, what I don't want, I don't I don't want that turned on by default because then look, if if you look in the 2009 folder, it looks like there's no files in there. Well, that's because they're all in the subfolders, right? But if we weren't showing the contents of the subfolders, it might look like I just have an empty folder. So you got to be a little bit careful or at least a little bit aware if you turn off the option to show photos in subfolders. So I typically will just leave that on. All right, excellent. Let's go back to the import dialog for a moment. And I'm going to show quickly the second way to import, and that is importing from files on disk. Now you can see this time it can't see my card because I ejected that drive. But what we can see is in my 2010 folder here, I've got a folder called White Sands, and that's the folder that I want to import. Now, since I've already copied it to my hard drive, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add the files to Lightroom. Basically, I'm just making Lightroom aware of the images that I've already moved and have in the correct location. And of course, I could be adding them from, you know, other drives, internal or external drives. But for now, we'll import this folder. Where am I going to do? File handling. Same settings as before. Apply during import. No develop settings this time, but definitely the metadata. And yes, some keywords. Let's do white sands and we can put um, actually let's put national monument and that is in New Mexico all right excellent again if this is the way that you typically prefer to import you might want to create an import preset I'll go ahead and select save and we'll just call this add from disk or from drive maybe that's easier all right then hit create. As you can see, we can see both of those presets right here. Add to catalog in place and import from card. Okay, fantastic. That's all we need to do. Just click import. This time they're going to import a little bit faster. And the reason for that is I happen to have a really slow um, card reader, which I need to fix. I need to get a zippier one. Um, but because when you add from your drive, Lightroom doesn't have to copy, or your operating system doesn't have to copy the files from your, your card onto your computer. This is obviously going to be a little bit faster. So here we've imported our 174 images, and we can see right down here in the folder area, here is our White Sands folder. Excellent. Okay, one of the things that you might have noticed was that when I add from disk, I can't actually rename on import. So if I wanted to rename my files, I would simply do a select all, which is command or control A, to select all of these images in the White Sands folder. And then we can go underneath the library menu and choose to rename our photos or choose F2. And then we can either select from one of the presets or we can go in here and edit them. So I just wanted to show you how to create your own preset. So I'm actually just going to type in my name and then I will add just a portion of the date. I just want the year here. So I'll select it and then click insert. And then I obviously want a sequence. So let's go ahead and choose from the list however many numbers we want. It's inserted it automatically. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and save this as a preset. We'll just call this uh, jcost and then file naming convention. Fantastic and hit create. So again, um, I'm showing you a different file naming convention here than we used before. I don't think if I were you, I wouldn't mix them, but I wanted to show you more than one option. Oh, you know what? I need to add a little underscore there. Otherwise, it's too confusing when I see that. And that's great because it gives me the opportunity to also show you if you've saved a template and then make a change to it, you can see it says edited. But if we just come down here and say update the preset, it will go ahead and update the preset for us. So excellent. All right, let's click done. And now we can choose to start this on whichever number we want. Go ahead and click OK, and it will go ahead and rename those files for us. 
Okay, something else I want to talk about. This 2009 folder and the 2010 folder here, it might be a little confusing for some of you. You might want to see what folder those two folders are in. So if you ever do, you can just you can just hold down the control key or on the Mac or right mouse click and then choose to add the parent folder. What it's going to do is it's going to add the next folder up so we can see now that both 2009 and 2010 are both in that photographs folder there. If you ever wanted to add more keywords, you would simply click right down here and then we could type in something like nest or still life. You can see that Lightroom's auto completing it for me, which is quite nice. So that's how you would add additional keywords. We also have uh, suggestions. It will come up with suggestions based on what other keywords you've used. And you can also create your own keyword sets. But that's a little advanced for this tutorial. And then the metadata area, if you've forgotten to add your metadata preset on import, you can go ahead and select it here and then go ahead and add that preset at any point in time. Excellent! That wraps up this tutorial on how to import files and organize them in the library module in Lightroom.